Good morning. Good morning. I'm hesitant because I have genuinely forgot what day it is. It's Thursday. Good morning. Thursday morning. Peaceful and quiet at Lanark Loch. Look at that, isn't it beautiful? Lots of nice trees. I've been here for ages. Good morning, Mr. Blackwood. No waterfall this morning. I might land at Loch. Look at that. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Beautiful morning. Good morning. Feels very different walking around Lanark Loch, where these vlogs began, where it all started. Let me get this camera flicked around. Good morning. I've got a geezer laugh, look, I've got my headphones in, right? They're not actually plugged into anything. Good morning. So, different walking around Lanark Loch this morning and not going round the core house loop uh, feels very different because I've uh, spent probably, I don't know, the last two months going round the same loop and I haven't been, I haven't walked around here for ages. So, good morning Carol, good morning Kirsten, good morning James, hope everybody's well. And, um, quick one, well, why am I walking around Lanark Lock and not the loop? Why is there not a waterfall this morning? There's not a waterfall this morning because I'm having a day of rest because I'm setting off on an adventure tomorrow and I'm just taking it easy um, today. So it feels really different coming round here this morning. And uh, why does it feel different? Because I've set up a pattern of behaviour. Morning, Clark. Look at those wee guys. Hello, wee guys. Aren't they beautiful? I think that's a mummy or a daddy looking after its children. They're cute as a button though. Little fluffy things. Morning everybody. Right, good morning. Well, as you can tell, I'm not at the courthouse loop. And I'm not at the waterfall, I'm at Lanark Loch. Right. And it feels very different coming round here this morning. And um, it feels unusual. Not that it's any better or any worse. It's just because over the last few months of doing my vlogs in the morning, I've been doing them up at the waterfall at Boddington and with uh, the guidance of far, far more experienced people than I am around about preparing for uh, an event. And this is what's called the rest day and I'm taking it easy. So I've called this morning getting curious, be curious. And what do I mean by that? So. If you've been watching these vlogs and if you haven't, I'll give you a quick update. For most of us, what we do is we become habitualised in our programmes of behaviour. So what we start to do is we start to go to work the same way, dress the same way. Kind of, we, we, we set up systems within systems that are familiar to us and over time those systems become habits. Those habits become scripts and schemas and they tie into our narratives. Now, generally those scripts and schemas um, are almost automatic. We don't have to put any thought into them. We don't think about driving any longer. We've been doing it that long. We just jump in the car and off we go. And you know, we've done the journey so many times. Like me going around courthouse, I've done that journey so many times. But for, I don't know, at least 10 years, I've walked around Lanark Lock every morning. And in the last two months, I broke that pattern and started going in a different way. Now this morning, for the first time in two months I've come round Lanark Lock and this is where all these vlogs started. This is where I was challenged to do a vlog every morning and uh, we're getting close to a hundred and here we are. So why have I called it Get Curious, Be Curious? So 
One of the reasons that we don't um, we don't start new things or break old habits, and that could be anything from alcoholism, drug addiction, cigarette smoking, uh, starting to exercise, changing our exercise regime, relationships that we're in, toxic relationships that we might be in, or defective relationships that we might be in, or jobs that we might be in. In my opinion, it is because a set of feelings come up, and those feelings. Um, can be uncomfortable and can be difficult, right? So, back to any habit formed has been set up as a script or a schema and we start to run those old programs, those old scripts and schemas and they become narratives and they become automatic. We end up following automatic programs because they're familiar, whether they're destructive or not, we just keep doing them because they're familiar. Now, when we bring curiosity into the mix of changing habits, Curiosity is a kind of another word for mindfulness and becoming mindful of goodness, it's bright. It's not going to be like this tomorrow, it's going to be raining. Shut up, Ross. Um now, so for an example, smoking. You smoke cigarettes, right? Uh, you decide to stop smoking those cigarettes. Now, if you what you generally do is go to the packet of cigarettes, put a cigarette in your mouth and smoke it, right? So when we're working with somebody, when I'm working with somebody around about stopping smoking, I encourage the person to smoke, I encourage the person to have a cigarette, um, but I encourage them to have a cigarette from a perspective of being mindful. So if that's in my office or whatever, I'll bring over my grandfather's ashtray, I'll sit it down and I'll say, have a cigarette. Now, be mindful about that cigarette and... What does that cigarette taste like? Now, the person that's coming to stop smoking knows that smoking's bad for them, knows that it can be cancerous causing, know that it stinks, and knows that it's costing them a lot of money. So intellectually, they understand that, right? So what I encourage them to do when I'm working with somebody to stop smoking, I can see you again, is to have a cigarette, smoke the cigarette, how does it taste, and really actually allow yourself to experience what it's like to taste the cigarette. And most people turn around and go, it tastes like shit, right? But because what's been driving the behavior up until this point is coming from an automatic response where you just go into the packet and do it, into the packet and do it, you're not actually present, uh, focused in the moment, in the now, whatever language you want to put on that when you're having the cigarette, right? So then we've done that and they go, oh, that tastes like shit. Now smell it, smell the room, go out, come back in. Room smells terrible, right? Okay, because you became habitualized to that process of behavior, you became accustomed to those patterns. That's little dog. Oh, Leonard. Hey, wee guy. You just chilling? You cool? Is that your daddy over there? You just want to hang loose with me for a minute? Right, so we're on the smoking vibe. Then the next step is to bring the person into curiosity. So when you feel like a cigarette and you're just about ready to go into the packet, right? You become curious, you become mindful. You start to become mindful of what's going on in your body. And then you will see that what's underneath this picking up the cigarette is a set of feelings. And then you sit with the feelings and you be with the feelings and you observe the feelings until they path, pass. Now, the reason I'm talking about this this morning is, it's being curious at all times about what's actually going on beneath the surface. Because until we become curious about what feelings are going on beneath the surface, right, those feelings are actually driving a lot of behaviours which keep us stuck in automatic programs and responses. Good morning, how are you? You well? Been ages for been around here, aye? You getting on all right? Um, where was a Patterns of behaviour, right? So automatic patterns of behaviour. So, again, triggers. You go to have a drink. You go to... Um, uh, you could be sitting on the couch and it's raining outside and... Oh, I'm not going to bother going out, I'm not going to bother exercising, I'm not going to do something that's going to be beneficial to me. Now again, this is the reason that uh, changing patterns of behaviour um, 
lots of people, and hey, I'm guilty of it as well, I'm going to put my hands up for it. Have you ever opened your phone or answered a text message when you've been driving? Right, and um, it was a couple of years ago, I remember speaking to a friend about it. And that was something that I had to knock on the head. And I gave that up. Now, smoking, fair enough, you're going to kill yourself, right? If you're smoking in the house and you've got kids in the house, high chance you're going to do them some damage as well. But we're driving cars around and people are picking up the phones. I'm seeing it consistently when I'm out driving about. And even more so when I'm on my motorbike, I'm looking about and I'm like, man, I'm freaking out here because so many people are sitting looking at their phones Texting when they're driving, answering messages when they're driving, text messaging, dialing telephone numbers, whatever it is that they're doing, right? What is driving you to do that behaviour, which is extremely dangerous, not just to yourself, but to other people round about you? Now, stop for a moment and think about that, right? Because that's not what we're doing, we're no thinking. So what is it that's became so impulsive within our drive, within our need to have to answer and respond to that person while we're driving a car down the motorway at 70 mile an hour, right? So the same thing as smoking. When you hear the beep come in, notice that your awareness goes to that and notice that there's a set of feelings come up. Notice that there's a set of needs and drives and wants that, pr that pulls you towards picking your phone up off the dash and starting to open it up and looking down here like that while you're driving along in the motorway. Now, starting to become curious about what it is that's actually fueling us and are we doing these behaviours out of fear or out of love, right? Now, if it was out of love, it was out of understanding, it was out of willingness, right? The thing that we would do is we would actually be thinking about other people that are on the road. Now, yesterday I opened up the news, which I very seldomly watch, and it was in Edinburgh, and there was a, an accident where a, 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 a kid, a young kid, uh, and I, I think it was an older woman had come out of side street and lost control of the car and pinned the wee guy against the wall, and that wee guy's dead, right? And it just makes you think how easy tragedies can happen. And if we were actually present and mindful in a lot of what was going on for us, could a lot of the a lot of these accidents and uh, dangerous situations that we find ourselves in, right? Could they be avoided, right? Now, switching it back a wee bit about how I came just to think about being curious this morning, because I was encouraged by a few close friends, because we're setting off on an adventure tomorrow, and I have been pushing myself pretty hard for the last couple of months, right? And they're like, ah, right, Ross, this is a day of rest, you don't do very much, you just quiet yourself down. Now, because I didn't have anything to sort of get up for, I didn't have something to do, um, like get up, be out of the house, half five, quarter to six, be at Boddington for quarter to seven, seven o'clock, get in the river for eight o'clock, out the river for eight o'clock, up the road, showered, shirt on, and at my computer and at my desk, ready to start work at nine o'clock, and that's no there. So I kind of was walking about this morning in the house, and I'm making a coffee, and I'm thinking to myself, you depressed? You in a bit of a low mood? What's going on for you? Right? And what I noticed as I was coming out to walk round Lanark Lock this morning was because my purpose of the day has changed. I still have to be at work for nine o'clock this morning. I still have to be online. But I don't have to go and do an eight mile hike with as much focus and force. And somewhere what I realised was what was driving my behaviour each morning was not necessarily better or worse. It was just different than how I had to prepare myself for this morning. And as I was preparing myself for this morning, there was a lot of feelings starting to come up around about tomorrow that were that were based in fear, inadequacy, um, massive amounts of fear, I'm repeating that. And what I would rather have done would be rather than feel those feelings of fear around about tomorrow, I would rather just deny, deny, and keep plunging and keep walking. And I'm finding it really unusual just to be doing a leisurely walk around about Lanark Lock this morning, rather than heed down, arse up, and really pumping round about the trails, right? 
So I'm sitting with those feelings and automatically I noticed how I was starting to question, am I in a low mood? Am I feeling low? Which then brings me to another point. My curiosity brought me to be around about a conversation that I had earlier on this week is why when your energy is high, why when your energy is high, you're well rested, you're up for it, you're feeling good, that when negative information comes towards you, it's almost like you've got wings of steel and that negative information bounces off you, right? So what I noticed was my energy was becoming low uh, just at the end of the weekend there, right? And then I got a bit of bad news, right? And I was sitting wondering about that bad news. And then what I started noticing was I started noticing that negative comments that I have received over the last two or three months around about doing these vlogs and genuinely, 100%, the level to which they affected me has been minuscule in comparison to how they started to affect me stroke Monday, stroke Tuesday, right? And then fortunately enough, out of the blue, my best pal phoned me on Tuesday for Australia. We sat down, we processed it, we spoke it out and through speaking it out and bringing acceptance to it, I cleared it. But the images that came to my mind was, let's just imagine that life, most of the time you're treading water, right? And sometimes you're up and you're out of the water and you're walking on water like Jesus, right? When you're up and you're walking on the water or even treading in water, when negative things come towards you, there is an ability that we have in order to manage them more effectively. But the minute that we get below the water, rather than looking for a lifeline that's going to get us back up into buoyancy and get us back to treading water and even walking on water again, the mind seems to look for weights to attach to our ankles to start to pull us closer down so that we start to sink and we start to sink in the water. Now, I don't necessarily have an answer for that, but that's just some of the things that I've been watching and being curious about. Now, what is your objective? What is your drive? Is your drive to stay on top of the water or is your drive to stay, stay sunk and stuck at the bottom, which is lonely, dark and cold? Now, um, being curious, starting to become curious is probably just a trendy word for being mindful. Bringing some mindfulness into your life and starting to notice the undercurrents of feelings and those undercurrents can very quickly pull you underneath the water unless you bring a degree of curiosity to it and start to look at that before we, we, we create any models of change, behavioural change and psychological change. So, happy Thursday, have a fantastic day and <clears throat> Goodness, we're nearly at 100 vlogs, we've done well and I am giving myself a pat in the back for that and I am actually giving myself a pat in the back for that. I'm quite amazed at the ability of stamina to keep this going and um, I'm, I'm very, very grateful for those that have uh, commented and how they're utilising some of the information that's been imparted on them and making changes in their life for the better. So... Have a fantastic Thursday. It's almost Friday. If it's been your first week back at work, you're back, you're through it. Again, be curious. What does it feel like being back at work? And rather than using those feelings to put hooks of weights onto you that's going to pull you down, there's Mr. Burrell giving me a smile. Good morning, Mr. Burrell. Right, guys, have a fantastic day. Wishing you all the best. God bless. Take care. We zoom back out. Lanark Loch. Take that and look at that, absolutely fantastic.